Thank you for this great opportunity to share my research with you. In this talk, I'd like to discuss urban rural inequalities in the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Xinhua Yu. I'm an associate professor in the Division of Epidemiology, Biostatistics, and Environmental Health at the School of Public Health, University of Memphis. If you have any questions about this talk, please feel free to email me. COVID-19 is caused by the infection of the novel beta coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. It started in December 2019 in Wuhan, China. Currently, there were over 6 million cases worldwide. There are a few unique issues in COVID-19. First, everyone is susceptible to the virus infection. No one has immunity against this virus. Elderly people, people ages 65 or above, or people with underlying chronic conditions are at higher risk of hospitalizations and deaths if infected with the virus. In fact, more than 50% of hospitalizations related to the COVID-19 and 80% of deaths were elderly people. There were numerous outbreaks in nursing homes, senior living residences, and congregations that attract many elderly people. There were also more cases in men than women. Majority of cases were in urban areas, but recent reports shows a rising number of cases in rural areas. In this study, we will use a line list file of individual COVID-19 cases from Florida Department of Health. Other information such as metropolitan status, population structures by age and gender for each county was obtained from the US Census Bureau. We will use a negative binomial model to fit the epidemic curve and the postural regression to obtain the adjusted incidence of COVID-19. We also use logistic regulations to obtain adjusted rates and also ratios of ED visits, hospitalizations, and deaths associated with COVID-19. Data and codes are available at the GitHub address. Florida is a large state. As of 2019, there were 21.5 million people. 20.5% of them are elderly people. As of May 27, 2020, there were 53,176 total COVID-19 cases. 25.7% of them were older people. There were also 10,056 hospitalizations associated with COVID-19. 54.3% of them were older people. There were total 2,446 deaths, 83.4% of them were elder people. Here are the epidemic curves by age groups. First, we noticed that the blue line representing the age 25 to 44 led to the epidemic in the whole population, followed by those aged 45 to 64, represented by the purple line. Those aged 65 to 34 represented by the orange line also had a similar shape that, to that of the younger people. But those aged 75 and above, the daily new cases increased by April 1st and then remained relatively stable over the whole period until May 15. These are the epidemic curves for older people by metropolitan status. First, we noticed that Majority of cases were in large metropolitan areas. There was a small rebound of new cases in the, around the May 15. For those cases in, occurred in rural or small metropolitan areas, the numbers are too small to see any meaningful patterns. Of all, there were 70% of cases occurred in the large metropolitan areas and there were only 7.8% of cases occurred in small metropolitan and rural areas. This slide presents the adjusted incidence of um, COVID-19 among older people across metropolitan status. The left side is for men and the right side is for women. The blue bars represent those aged 65 to 74 and the orange bars for those aged 75 and above. First, we noticed that those living in small metropolitan areas had a much, much lower rates of COVID-19 than those living in large metropolitan areas. 
On the other hand, those living in rural areas, the COVID-19 incidence were higher than those large areas, particularly among those women aged 75 and above living in rural areas. The adjusted incidence is almost double to those living in large metropolitan areas. The patterns for the ED visits are different. There were decreasing trends across all groups for both men and men, women, for both young and old aged. Those living in small metropolitan and rural areas had a much lower rates of ED visits than those living in large metropolitan areas. Again, those women aged 75 or above living in small or rural areas had a significantly lower ED visit rates than those living in large metropolitan areas. Similarly, there were significant decreasing trends of, of hospitalization rates, in particular among women aged 75 and above. Those living in small metropolitan and rural areas had a much lower hospitalization rates than those living in large metropolitan areas. However, there was no statistical significance in the death rates across the metropolitan areas. Although there's a slight hint that men aged 75 and above living in small or rural area may have slightly higher death rates than those living in metropolitan areas. Finally, we mapped the hospitalization rates to the Florida counties. The right corner, the lower corner, is the Miami-Dade County and the up and the middle left side are cities for Tallahassee and Pensacola and other uh, major cities. The interesting thing here is that there are some dark county, dark colored counties uh, in the middle of the Florida that are not metropolitan areas. In conclusion, most COVID-19 cases in U.S. Florida were in large or medium-sized metropolitan areas. Elderly people living in small metropolitan areas had a lower incidence of COVID-19, while those living in rural areas had a higher incidence than those living in large metropolitan areas. Elderly patients in small metropolitan and rural areas had lower rates of ED visits and hospitalizations than those living in large metropolitan areas. Elderly men had higher rates of ED visits and hospitalizations than elderly women. In particular, older women aged 75 or above living in rural areas had a higher incidence of COVID-19, but had a significantly lower rates of ED visits and hospitalizations than those in large metropolitan areas. Our study has a few limitations. First, we conducted our analysis only using Florida data. The COVID-19 epidemic is likely different across different states. Therefore, generalizing our results to other states should be cautious. Second, we know that testing capacity may limit the case diagnosis. Therefore, the lower incidence among small metropolitan areas may be due to the insufficient capacity of the testing kits. We also know healthcare resources are very limited in small metropolitan and rural areas. Thus, the lower rates of ED visits and hospitalizations in small metropolitan and rural areas may be due to the lack of healthcare resources. We also don't have detailed information for the timing from symptom onset to ED visits hospitalizations and deaths for each individual. Therefore, we won't be able to do detailed analysis. We also lack information about patients' comorbidities. We know that people with comorbidities are at, at higher risk of hospitalizations and deaths if they got infected with the coronavirus. We also don't have other social demographic characteristics such as race, ethnicity, income, education, and so forth. These factors will likely affect the risks of infection, hospitalizations, and deaths. Finally, it is very important to study 
the change of inequalities over time and across different regions. We know that with improved diagnosis and treatment, and also with more healthcare resources allocated to small metropolitan and rural areas, the inequalities will likely change over time and across different regions. If you are interested and uh, like to see more details, please feel free to check out the full report. I post this uh, on the Meta Archive website. If you have any comments, please also feel free to email me. Thank you.